What's up guys? Um, my wife told me that I neglect my uh, YouTube audience for far too long. So here's a video. I'm trying to get this sheet of paper here. This is, um, we're gonna landscape this time. Landscape and orientation and landscape and drawing. Excuse me. Um, this is, the paper is called it's BFK Reeves or something like that. Uh, this call is called. It's kind of like okay. It's BFK. Let me see this. BFK Reeves, France. It's like a grayish tone to it. It's not completely white. It's like an off-white grayish tone, like a bone color almost. Um, I really like that color. I'm using this masking tape to mask off the areas I don't want to draw and to hold it onto the drawing board at the same time. That's on the easel. We're going to make a landscape drawing. This is actually, the, these are 22 by 30 drawing sheets, 22 by 30 inches. Um, I, I cut them into four because landscape drawings, I like to keep a little bit smaller. They're like my smaller drawings are landscape drawings and my bigger drawings are people drawings, which is kind of funny because it's kind of almost counterintuitive. But I like it like that because I don't want to cover big areas of tone. Um, I think I work better smaller when it comes to landscapes. So it'll be a charcoal landscape and I'll show you how I'm going to go about it. This is going to be my reference down here. I'm not going to follow it exactly, but I'll follow it somewhat similarly. I think that it's important if you want to do a, a charcoal landscape to find a landscape that seems a little bit moody, but Moody in the sense of um, a lot of atmosphere. Atmosphere is that like fog or grayness to it. I think it's a really cool effect that you could achieve with charcoal, but you can't achieve as good with other materials or as um, efficiently, I guess you can say. Let's take some, <clears throat> put down some charcoal powder. I'm just gonna use my fingers. I don't know how, actually no, I'm not gonna use my fingers. I'll use this old paper towel I have sitting here. I'm gonna dip it into this general charcoal powder and start making the general shapes of where I want everything. It fades out really light. It doesn't stick that great to the um, paper. I think that that's super useful for for the drawing process since you can just not be too careful with it and it's fine because you can fade it out, erase it out. It's all it all works. But I want to tone the whole thing. I'm getting a basic idea. I'm squinting at the reference when I'm working. I'm getting a basic idea of where everything goes. Um, instead of sketching out lines, I think it's more fun and a little bit faster and more effective to work with shapes and values to block in. That way you're not struggling to create lines because there's no real lines and there's no lines in reality, really. It's all just shapes and shadows and light. There's color, but I'm not using color. Um, I think it's really important also if you're looking for a reference to use, don't have it be too complex or it's gonna take you a long time. It's gonna be really hard to, it's gonna be really frustrating if you're still learning the charcoal drawing process. Um, so take in very simple, start off with very simple um, drawings and make sure you're getting those values right, those proportions right of where everything goes. You guys have been asking for a lot of proportion videos. Um, I was gonna save that for the next one, I think. Um, we'll do face, facial proportions, that'll be fun. Um, super important. And I'm starting to, like if I squint, I'm looking at this and it looks, it's starting to have similarities to uh, the reference. And so I'm gonna close this back up, this charcoal, because you can also do it with crushed up um, compressed charcoal. If you want to do that, just like get a sand, piece of sandpaper or I use this thing and then um, make it like a sanding thing. I'll take a piece of compressed charcoal, set it down like this and slap it on there and then this will be way darker. You should use willow charcoal if you're going to do this, but because um, I just went way too dark on this part, but it's okay, I'll fix it. Um, and then we'll take some more. If you use compressed charcoal, remember it's going to be really dark. Um, and you could blend it in there that way with your fingers, a blending stump, um, or paper towel. Blending stump's a little more accurate, a little more precise. 
but let's work from large scale items to the smaller scale items. That way everything flows nicely together. Don't worry about going a little too dark, especially if you're building it, building it up because um, you are able to erase out some lights with a kneaded eraser. Oh yeah, and so for the reference, I think it's a lot more effective and easier to work with a reference that you turned into black and white or that is black and white um, with a nice value range, meaning some light lights and dark darks in there, not, not just two, three values, but maybe seven or eight values changes is nicer and a little bit more, you'll be a little more successful than just making it look like silhouettes, which can look flat. The dimensions come with all those value changes. The dimensionality of making it look less flat comes with all that. There's gonna be a person right here. Should I make them right smack in the middle? Yeah, very close to the middle. We'll do a little bit lower and a little bit slightly to the left. I think that'll be a nice uh, juxtaposition for the rest of it as well. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting there. It's like a pathway here and there's gonna be like lights around here kind of guiding this way and a couple more lights back there. So with that in mind, I'm kind of making sure that I keep that atmospheric perspective or that atmospheric, um, I guess it's called it's like the effect going, blending it out, but don't blend too much and too hard because you might lose a lot of those details that you're, and textures that you're applying. Um, I usually tend to keep these areas, I want to keep these areas of the drawing a little bit darker so that it focuses kind of like a, what is that camera effect, the photo photo effect called usually um, with cameras that um, sometimes people do it naturally and sometimes people have it so that it's um, uh, in post. They, they make the effect happen in post. I think it's called like, a, yeah, what is that word called? It, v vignette, vign vignette, vignette, I think it's called, where it's like darker on the edges. Here, let's use some of that charcoal powder again, or maybe what I have down here. Vignette, I think it's called. Don't make it super obvious and super crazy like I did just there. I'm gonna actually have to tone that back a little bit or darken the rest of the sky too, because keep it tasteful, you know? Keep those subtle value changes nice and subtle. Don't go extremely black and extremely light on everything. Those nice in-between grays are just gonna bring your drawing to life. It's what's going to make it seem like, wow, this person knows what they're doing. This really does feel like a, like a real photo photograph almost, even though there's very little detail in it. Even now, if you squint, it's starting to read as if something taken out of a camera. And that's because of those subtleties and those changes in values that you need to be sensitive about to be able to effectively first effectively see and then effectively replicate onto the paper. That's all what landscape drawing is about, doing that or landscape painting even, um, except in painting, if you're not working in black and white, you have to know some color theory as well, which is challenging. I know some, but it tends to not be exactly what I enjoy the most. <clears throat> well, I do love me a nice plein air painting session or drawing even charcoal session. That's awesome, I love it. But I don't do it as often as I should because it takes a lot of preparation and it's hot outside right now in Arizona, where I'm from, in Phoenix. Um, going up north is a couple hour drive and I have a family to support. So here we are making YouTube videos because my wife told me that I neglect you guys. I'm so sorry I do because long format videos like this one where I show you guys how to draw something. Super fun for me, but a little more work, even though I don't really edit them. A little more work than um, than I usually take for doing the rest of my things like TikTok videos and stuff like that, which are a little more exciting for me personally, but this is really important too for you guys to learn if you guys are looking to learn or just enjoying drawing, my drawing process and watching what I, how I do things which is constantly changing and I'm constantly learning. Um, just like everybody else or any other professional artist would tell you the same. Growing and learning constantly, as long as they're actually 
being serious, they're not lying to you, that they're not growing and learning every single day or every single time they paint and draw. I'm liking this effect so far. I'm trying to make sure that this doesn't look like a river. I want to make it look more like a road or like a path. It's going to be a little difficult to make sure of that. Or maybe I can make it seem as if it could be either one because I'm not going to follow exactly the reference. I'm not trying to rip off this photographer that made this image. I just want this to be the inspiration and the vibes for the image, you know? That's why I'm not being too careful with the proportions because it's not a face. It's not something that if it doesn't, that if I mess it up a little bit, it's gonna look off or change it up a little bit, it's gonna look off. It's actually just nature, which can be very organic and, and different um, in terms of the shapes and shadows and mountains and you can almost make it up from your mind and it'll look good. Like almost like Bob Ross does, right? He, he makes stuff, a lot of stuff up from his mind. He doesn't really work for photography and it still looks good because it's not people's faces. If you work in and draw people's faces, you might accidentally make them look like someone else or somebody specific and you, or even just weird. You don't really want that sometimes. So unless you're drawing something specifically, in which case you should definitely work from a, from a reference. What would be fun too is like taking multiple um, references for for these landscape drawings and kind of combining it and keeping the elements from certain um, from certain references and combining them into what I know some artists I do that that kind of make it almost like a fantasy landscape of what things they just want to put in it. It's really cool, like different types of trees, different types of mountains, different types of skies, different types of sunlight and people and um, buildings. I think that's super cool. And it's very, a lot more original than just copying or using one reference photo. I need to get this mountain chiseled out just a little bit more and then make sure that that mountain behind it is really established there. Like this. And kind of poking out at the ends where it kind of touches the skyline. To kind of resemble growth of trees and vegetation just a little bit you know you're kind of getting that feeling a little bit it's all in the subtleties those breaks and changes in value sometimes will go a long way i dip that into the, the paper towel into the pan pastel a little bit just like a dish so i usually use a foam tip and a palette knife with that but you could dip a little bit of that paper towel in there and blend in those dark values. Almost like you're painting. That's why I like charcoal so much. It's almost like painting while you draw. Dry, it's the closest thing to dry media of painting that you can get, I think. Besides maybe oil pastels or soft pastels. Depends on your style. There we go, now we're getting a little more depth because the darkness is really showing through now. I'm trying to not be too detailed still. Like I'm not making any branches, any bushes or anything like that because that should come just to top the icing on the cake. You know, it's not supposed to be branch after branch after branch after leaf after blade of grass that's gonna make this whole thing read well. It's gonna be the huge spaces of value, kind of like you're drawing hair. You can't draw each strand of hair and think that it's gonna come out looking nice because that's not the way the human eye works. We see huge and um, dark areas with small details on the ends of them and it's subtle changes in values in certain areas. But first and foremost, you wanna get the majority, 90% of the values correct and then the rest of it will work out itself in the, in the viewer's mind then you can refine as much as you want you can get as detailed as much as you want but until then like look I could add a little couple blades of grass here just touching it you know pull them out pull them out of those lighter areas you're already feeling some texture there maybe a little bit here a little bit bigger because they're a little closer and then obviously over here
I really so here I'm gonna have some blades grass coming up this way but I already like this light area I like this value here and I don't want to erase down into it to make those come up this way because it's gonna get too light here so I'm just gonna pull up some darkness and make those the blades of grass instead subtly and sparingly don't go crazy with it or else the overwhelming texture and detail is going to really draw away from the focal point of the image which we want it to be around here um, so this is what we want a little more detailed and a little more careful and spend more time in here to really make it focal the focal point be there and that's what we want be super subtle with this now I'm gonna be dark with a little figure I'm gonna put I'm not gonna even detail them very much I just want to make it look that that person is there especially when you squint because I don't want to give too much information to I kind of looks like a river a little bit huh to uh, to the viewer I want them to figure out and add to the drawing with their mind I think that's a lot more interesting than just drawing it completely the way um, everything figured out if you leave a little bit for the viewer to figure out I think it's just so much more meaningful to them and they're gonna add their own meaning to the piece um, on top of what you've already guided them toward. And I think it's just so much more intimate and beautiful. Um, it's a more beautiful way of creating artwork and being able to identify and adapt with each piece. To, no matter who you are, you might identify and adapt with it a little differently, which I think is cool. Some people might see this as a very hopeful, beautiful, lively peaceful piece and some people might look at it as a very dark depressing and um almost traumatizing piece which i mean those are both of those things can be completely valid for the viewer i'm not here to decide for them i'm just here to guide them towards those emotions and feelings and to evoke those I keep squinting at the drawing over and over again to try to read the, read the piece without um, being distracted by all the little details. <clears throat> I don't really like drawing with, uh, with no music or anything playing. I usually have like some piano music playing, but... I know all that stuff is like copyrighted and YouTube's crazy with it, so I just don't mess with that. Otherwise, you'll find me in my studio drawing with some peaceful ambient music or depending on my mood, sometimes I get crazy with it, but not as often. That's usually later at night. <laughs> if I'm trying for some reason late at night, which I rarely do nowadays since I'm working at like almost like a nine to five. So we'll, we'll pop in a light right there. We'll do another one right here. Kind of like a little glowy erased area. But see, if it's just a little sphere like that, it looks kind of weird. We'll do a little bit of lens flare. Pull it up, pull it down, and a little bit on the horizontal as well. Really delicate with it. <clears throat> we'll have little dots in the very distance, almost like or lights or something and then um, I think these little delicate details are gonna add a lot to the drawing but we'll see I'm not placing them exactly where they are in the image but in the reference image I'm kind of placing them where I think it'll work best for my piece an artistic license kind of I used to hate that word when the art teachers would use that but I'm gonna get what they meant now. <laughs> See, it's not too, it doesn't take too long to accomplish something like this. You just need to be sensitive to the value changes and the proportions and um, kind of familiar with how to apply the charcoal and control what is inherently and naturally organically messy, you know? We'll do one last one up here. Kind of guiding it off into the mountains. I'm 
and then we'll blend them in just a little bit so that we lose some of that sharpness and it just becomes a little more subtle. I actually think we might have blended them out too much. Let's pull some of those brightnesses back out just a little bit. Primarily the middle of it, because that's where the sharpest contrast should be. And I think we're losing a little bit of this figure's silhouette here. Let me give them a little bit in between for some legs. And then a tiny bit off the side to kind of pretend there's some hands or something there as they walk along the path. Not really, I don't really have like a shadow and stuff for them here, but maybe a little bit of a hint of that might. Try to blend that down a little bit. There, that kind of looks like they're more on a path now. Maybe one of those lights kind of casting like a sharp little reflection of water on, on like, a, like, a, like a wet wetness on the path a little bit, just a little bit. So you can try the style of drawing with pretty much a, in anything like a cityscape, you can do a landscape, you can do a, um, like a forest, you know, something in the dark, something in the daytime. Um, it's just a lot more effective in my opinion if you use something with um, some atmosphere to it, fogginess almost. I think it's a cool look. So. Please feel free to experiment. I like this size because it's not too small where you can't control the little marks of the charcoal, but it's big enough. Um, it's big enough to make it presentable, to work e work it easier, and it's also um, small enough that you don't have to spend so much time filling on huge areas of value. So. All right, I'm about done with this piece, I think. You guys want to see me peel it off? That'll be satisfying for you guys. Hopefully it doesn't take off too much of that paper. Try to go a little bit gentle with it. No, it's not too bad. Cool, that nice crisp edge. Next piece right here. This is just normal artist tape or even, I don't know, masking tape, I don't know. I should have just stuck it on my clothes a little bit, get a little bit of linen on that so that it's not tearing any of the paper away, but we'll make it, it'll be fine. The bottom piece, I'm not gonna touch it on the white edge because that'll smear the crap out of it. I wanna keep it kinda clean. And the top part, hopefully it's, <laughs> hopefully it's gonna be okay, let's see. No, nope, that's not going well over there on that side. Mm, we're getting some of that, okay, we're fine. There's a tiny little piece right there holding it up, that's okay. So this is my completed drawing. I think it has a nice uh, effect to it. I think it looks kind of cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh-oh, some of those finger marks are a little bit too obvious here. I'm gonna pull this side of the mountain down just a little bit. This side should be down a little higher. It's okay, we're good. I like it. What do you guys think? Um, let me know if you guys like landscapes or landscape drawings. I'm gonna make a facial proportion video for the next video. Check out madcharcoal.com if you guys wanna buy some artwork or if you guys want to buy my drawing course, um, which is a little more in depth and basic and about materials and all that and, uh, and about proportion and values. All that is included in there pretty um, detailed actually and thorough and there's also my art kit that you can buy off of my website. That has all the materials I use for drawing, except for the paper. There actually does come with a sketchbook, but not actual drawing paper like the larger sheets like this. Um, but let me know what you guys would like to see next. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Bye.